All right, thank you very much. So today I said we'll go through um, quiz. So I'm going to share my screen immediately and then we'll start immediately. Um, the first step to creating any quiz, once, you, once you're on your course page, the first thing to do is to go straight to turn editing on. Once you turn your editing on, the next thing is to go to the week, under the week where you want to create this quiz. And then you click on add an activity or resource. Let me go through that again. You're on your course page. Your course is um, EIE 311 or whatever it is, PM, PET 211, whatever the course code is, you enter your course, you have enrolled into that course, you go to the course page and then you turn editing on. So step one is what? Login, get to your course page, turn editing on. And then once you have turned editing on, you click on add an activity or resource, just like I did just now. Add an activity or resource. Add an activity or resource. Then you scroll down to where we have quiz. Quiz. Quiz is directly under activities. So you go down and then you click on quiz. And once you do that, you click on add. And once you add, you just wait a little for it to load. So this is where we start dealing with the quiz. So let me quickly back up a bit. Quiz has three sections. Every test, every exam that you want to, con to conduct in your class or your student will always have three sections. And section one is this. You're going to first of all create what we call the environment of that, uh, the behavior of the of the test. What I mean is you want to talk about how long the test will take. You want to talk about the instruction. You want to you want to talk about okay, what time are they going to do it? When are they going to do it? And all that. So the system wants to know how you want the quiz to behave. Are they going to finish and see their scores? Are they going to wait for some time before they see their scores? All that is supposed to be dealt with in between the process of creating the quiz. So what do we do with that? And that is why we have to go through this process. Now, the second part to creating a quiz is the part where you set up your questions. To set up your questions, I'll also show us a bit of that before, before, we, before, we, um, before we finish this, um, this, this test. I'll show us how, I mean, this training, before, how you create your questions. So we're going to be using what we call, the multi, we're going to be using multi-choice. We're going to be creating multi-choice questions. And um, the format we'll be using is called Akin format. Akin format. Uh, it's called Akin format in Moodle, but you don't need to bother yourself about that format. It's just that you need to know it when you want to upload your question so that you know what exactly you are, you are going to click on. Now, the third part will now be that after you have created the environment, you have created your questions offline, you now want to connect your questions with the instruction, with the environment. That is the third part. And I will just take us through those processes one after the other. So I would like to first of all create the environment, which we're all used to. Um, what I mean is let us talk, let us tell the, the quiz that this is how you have to behave. So please pay attention to how you do your settings, which is the same thing as creating the environment. So I'm gonna call this um, business, business quiz. Quiz one, business quiz one. Now I'm going to set, tell the, give instructions. The instruction is going to be password is quiz one. Please take note of this. Why I'm doing this, why I'm doing this under the description is that this description is what the students will see. All those uh, instructions that you put on your, on your test um, questions, exam questions, you can put them here under the description. You can tell them that, okay, you are supposed to answer all questions and all that. If you wish, you can do that. But what I'm most interested in here is to tell this quiz that, to tell this exam or the students that this quiz has a password and this is a password. And we're still going to use this password later on in this quiz. Please just hold on with your questions and we're going to have some time for question and answer. So, and then once, once that time comes, I'll start picking up the questions from the chat section. Thank you very much. So, let us look at how long is this test or this quiz going to take? The first thing to do when you get to this point is to open the quiz. So this quiz is going to be open. Now, currently the time is um, um, 9.10. So I'm gonna leave it as 
9, 10. So opening of the quiz can be from today till next week. You can open this quiz for a period of one day, two days, 30 minutes, as long as you want this quiz to be opened. But however, you have to take note that once this quiz is opened, that means that if I open this quiz for a period of one day and I say time limit is 30 minutes, what it simply means is that students would be able to take this quiz between today and tomorrow, but they can only spend 30 minutes on the quiz. That's as simple as it is. So let us go through that. So closing. Um, closing quiz, I said, let us make it a one day affair. So I'm going to set that. So I've said it's opening on the 7th, it's closing on the 8th by 9.07 in the morning. Now take note, if you want to set a quiz to close the, the, and later in the day, you're supposed to actually select, it's a 24 hour clock. So take note, if it is five o'clock in the evening, you're supposed to select 17. Please take note of that. So let me move forward now. Um, so if, as a matter of fact, I would like you to even end by six o'clock in the evening. So six o'clock in the evening, that's when this quiz will end tomorrow. Now, how long would they take on this quiz? That depends on the lecturer. I think I have, a, I, I'm trying to set up a quiz for about um, 12 questions. So what I would do is um, I'll say that this quiz is for five minutes. So anytime you get there, you only have five minutes to spend on this quiz. So let's move forward now. Now, grading. Grading, you can see grade category. You, I, I would advise that you leave that. That will be for another training. Grade to pass. Well, some other persons who have gone a bit higher, advanced in knowing how to use this quiz, um, to kn knowing how to use quiz very well, would apply grade to pass. And what it means is that you can set a passing grade for a quiz. And how does that work? Let's say that you have decided that your students should take this quiz for five times, six times, but you are telling them that, you are telling the system that, look, I don't want to, them to keep trying. I want them to only try up until the time they pass. So you said they set a passing score and then the person tries, maybe on the first attempt, it gets maybe 80% and your passing score is actually 80. That is what we use that for. But I'm not going to go through that for this training so that you don't get confused. I just said, let me just mention that. Attempts allowed. The moment I say one attempt, it takes away, you see the moment I said unlimited, the grading method is asking me that, should I pick the highest grade? Let's say I say, take three attempts. The grading method is asking that, okay, which of the um, attempts should I record? Should I record the highest grade out of the three attempts? Should I take the average of the three attempts? Should I take the first attempt or the last attempt? The moment you set that you should pick any of them, it will work accordingly. But most of us, most of the time, what we like to do is to say one attempt. One attempt. One attempt. So let's move forward now. Now layout. Layout means how many questions will show on every page? How many questions is expected to show on every page? So let us look at that. So I will say one question per page. One question per page. That's what I do most of the time. But if you want, uh, for questions that have been, um, uh, some, there are some exams that has to be sequential. That has to be sequential. Some persons will say, I want it to be more than two, three questions on a page. So I'll just leave it as every question on a page. Please, as much as possible, I would advise that don't do too many things. Just follow what I'm trying to do so that you don't get confused. So what I've just done is I've selected every question on a page. Now let's go to question behavior. I'll also leave that as shuffle within question. Shuffle within question means that if I have 20 questions, I don't want it to, I want it to shuffle the questions over and over and over. Every time a new student comes online, it should shuffle the questions. 
then I would also advise that you leave how question behave as deferred feedback. I won't talk about that so that you don't get confused. There's a, there's a lot there that, the, that um, this system does with that. So let's move forward. So I'm just showing you the default settings. Of course, I'm going to do a step-by-step a, um, a -step guide after this, and I will upload it to a place where we can all assess it so that you can, the things I'm saying, you'll be able to also see it as a step to and watch it alongside, alongside with the video. So how do we, what, do, what does review options do? Review options act is asking us that immediately after this, the, the student submits the quiz, should I allow the students to see the following? Should they see the correct marks, the correct um, answers? Should they see all the things that is actually listed in front of us here? What we do is simple. Um, I don't want the students to see their, their results immediately. I, I uncheck all this. Once you, once you uncheck these three things, the attempt, the marks, the overall feedback, everything becomes inactive. The same thing happens when you do this. So the first one says immediately after attempt, two minutes after the, after the, for the next two minutes after the student submits, the student will see his scores. After two minutes, he will no longer see the scores. Later, while the quiz is still opened, it means that while this quiz is still opened, that means between today and six o'clock in the evening tomorrow, if the student has finished, he should be able to see what, see his scores. But once the quiz is closed by six o'clock tomorrow, the system would no longer allow them to see their scores. Now, the last one is after the quiz is closed. After the quiz is closed, what does that mean? After the quiz is closed, allow them to start seeing their scores. So it means that by six o'clock tomorrow, which is the time we have set for the closing of this quiz, the, in, by six o'clock, everybody that had attempted this quiz will start seeing their scores. So, but if you now say, okay, I want them to see their scores along the way, then you can just simply select only max. Please take note of what I selected now. Only max across board. It means that once you submit, you see your scores and you keep seeing it forever. You keep seeing it forever. So let me be sure that, um, um, okay. Um, okay, okay, so I'm seeing some questions. I, I would respond to these questions. Uh, I, can't, I can't see your picture, but your voice is clear. Very good. So um, I'll come back to these questions later. So I don't want us to get distracted. Now, please take note of the things I've said. This option is very, very crucial. This option is very crucial because the mistakes a lot of lecturers who are using this quiz do make is that sometimes you have already set it and then in between you have said that um, the students should be able to see their correct answer. The system will show them their correct answer if you don't do the correct thing. Here. Okay, so appearance. Appearance simply means that I want this quiz to show, I don't want decimal places. I personally, anytime I'm setting up this quiz, Decimal places, I don't like it uh, sometimes so that you don't have problems with um, this thing. The system calculates based on whatever you do here. No image um, so that we don't overload the system. Um, extra restriction. This is where we are going to now use the quiz password. Let me say something about quiz password. Sometimes you hear that um, some people came in. Uh, okay, maybe when I get to that point, but it is possible to actually restrict people from taking a quiz if they didn't, um, if you have a set of persons, a set of persons that you want them to take this quiz alone, like we do in the in exams, that is also possible, but I will not go through that today so that I don't get confused. So this is, um, then you can also, you can also um, use browser security, full screen pop-up, but I won't do that. I'll just go straight this simple flow so that I don't get confused. Required password, I've already put the required password, which is quiz one, then, Overall feedback, I didn't put anything as overall feedback here. Overall feedback means that I want to tell them a message. You have gotten, you, you got 100%, I'll type excellent. I type, I'll type excellent. And then I can also set the grade boundary for anything 70 and, and all that. So, but like I said, when you're practicing, you can try it, um, but for this, particular training, I won't do that. So 
common module settings. Is this quiz available? Maybe you are still setting it up. You can hide it from the students. You are not yet done. You can start setting up and then you are not yet done. You can hide it from the student. Like I said, there are three parts to this. You are just setting up the first part and you are not yet done. You can hide it. Um, restrict. Now, this restrict access, let me say something very serious about restrict access. If I don't want this quiz available, yeah. to, if I don't want this yeah. quiz available to students until I have completed, until they have completed a certain tax, that is when we restrict access. If I say, I don't want you to be able to take this quiz, except you have gone through, let's say, a lecture note or the course compact, for instance. I say course compact must be marked completed. Must be marked completed. And I put this restriction. What it's simply saying is that until the student has gone to click on course compact and view it, this quiz will not be available for that student. It may be available for other students who have completed it. But take note before you take this step, the activity completion under course compact, the activity completion under course compact must be set. That's the completion tracking, which is what we're trying to say that um, in, in the place of, or uh, as another alternative to attendance taking, um, I want to be sure that um, I want to know those that actually came to visit this, this or came and downloaded this material, I can use this completion tracking to track them. So what I normally advise, and what, which is very strong, that you always set for any of your, anything that you are doing, always set show activity as complete when conditions are met. So for this particular completion, that, this tracking that I want to do, student must view this activity to complete it. Require a grid. Student at least must have a grid. I will leave the rest because we didn't use require a passing grid. We didn't use at, uh, available attempts completed. We didn't use that. So a lot of lecturers ask me about expected completion on. I also advise that you leave that for now because since you're still growing, I would advise that you leave that for now. So let's move forward. Tags. You leave that com competencies. I would take a training on competencies, maybe during this series of trainings. Um, competencies helps us to check how to, it works with your learning plans. You can develop a learning plan with this system. And then you can check when a student is actually competent. The system will say, yes, it's competent or not competent based on the parameters you have set. There are standard industry parameters anyway, but we'll come to that sometime later. So let us save this that we have done. I've, I decided to take so much time on this so that we would not um, have too many questions. But if you still have questions, no problem. So this is the first part to it. Now you can see this is the way it will appear. It's appearing like edit quiz, and then you don't know what next to do. The next thing to do is simple. You come over to this icon, and then you are supposed to set up your question bank. This part of question bank setting up is to bring in your questions. So um, I'm going to um, pause a bit, and I want to show us how to set up your question. Then I'll come back to this page, then continue. I'm going to show us how to set up your question. I've, I've already prepared some things um, for us to see. So let me just unshare this page, and then um, let me go and bring that in. Just a second. Okay, so let me share this. Now, this is a Word document that has questions. It has questions like you would have it normally. Uh, maybe this is a sample of your question. But we would not use it. You can't upload it in this format. You cannot upload it in this format. You have to transform it into something that is usable. Um, you have to transform it into something that is usable. I'm trying to get to good. So this is what you have as a lecturer that wants to set up a quiz. Some of us have it like this. 
but I will show us, let me just show us the next thing that will show us, will now show us how Now this is notepad. When you have that question in Microsoft Word, you copy it and bring it to your notepad. This is for simple um, multi-choice questions. Please take note of that. There are other things that will add to it, but like I said, I want to make this as simple as possible so that um, we will not need to do too many, too many things. Okay. Don't worry, I would create a practice um, site for us very soon. Um, so your questions in this format, please take note. I think I decided to leave the last question. When you bring your question here, it does not need, um, does not need the, you don't need to put question one, two, three, like, you know, like this one can be 11. No, it doesn't need that. You need to just leave it in this format. Your answer, initially to look like this but you're supposed to have answer typed here space and then put with this column then put the correct option a lot of lecturers also like putting none of the above since you have already told the system to shuffle the question you may want to change none of the above to none of the options because this question d that you're seeing this option d that you're seeing here may as well become option a later on so i have not put the answer for this so this is what i'm saying as you can see i've decided to put the answer for that question yes. now again there are other things that you must take note of like this now if i upload this this way if i upload it with this a full stop when it gets to the system the system will consider it as another option so since i'm saying it is a, both A and B, I may want to do it like this. Depends on you anyway, but I like to do it this way. But ensure that you don't have options in between the questions, like this. I'll check again. Um, everything looks okay. Everything looks okay. And so anytime you send us your questions, this is what we actually go through. We look at each of the each line and every detail properly to ensure that the system will not reject it upon upload. And once it rejects it upon upload, it will also tell you uh, it will just stop at the question where it's made where there is an error. And but unfortunately, if in the in between the one I just changed from A to the option to this thing, that may pick it up as an option. So please be careful. So once you are done with this, you save it, you save as. Anytime you are saving as, please ensure that the encoding is in encoding. Encoding is in UTF-8. UTF-8. The encoding is in UTF-8. So I think we are ready to upload this now. So the question setting is complete. So I will go back to... Let's go back to where we're working online just now. Um, so this is where we are. So let me come back here now. So straight away, I'll go to my question bank. When I get to the question bank, I can decide to have categories. Please listen to this now. You have done, uh, maybe you want to set a, a quiz for, the, for all your um, what do you call it, all the uh, topics you have been treating. You can decide to set all those quiz, create question banks for each topic. And when you come to the question bank, you go to your category and decide to create a category for each topic. For instance, I come here and I say that under um, this, under the, the course, under this course, I want to say topic one. As I say, topic one, I have that category. Good. You see already? I go back again. What I'm trying to do is creating different question banks. I add the same category. And I have two question banks. Now, what I want to do next, 
is that I want to upload questions into these two banks. And then when I set up my quiz, I can tell that from question bank one, pick five questions. From question bank two, pick just three questions. And anytime the students come online, it will just pick it accordingly. So we're going to see that work just now. And if you're not using any of that, you can just go straight ahead and just use one of the question bank to set up your quiz. So the next thing I want to do now is to import these questions into these banks. Take note of what I just did. I only just created a category. But if you don't create any category, notwithstanding, it will just simply upload it into the default category, which is this for the quiz. So once I say import, now I spoke about Akin format. This is what I mean. Akin format is the first format that you can use. This, all these other formats are available. I sent a video, a third video, that I created specifically for um, uh, for glossary. That that Akin format, um, that format we, I used Moodle um, XML format. But for this particular training, we're going to just talk about Akin format. So. On that general, I want to now tell this, this um, import to import it into topic one. And then I will just simply come over to where this question is saved. And then I put it, I drag and drop, or I simply go to choose file, upload, and I look for where it is saved on the system. So, but you can also just do drag and drop, which makes it easier for me. Or, for any other person. So it's, it's the same thing. So I just click on import. I have 12 questions, and you can see that it has imported 12 questions. The next thing I click on continue. Immediately I do that, it has already imported it into this um, the bank. You can go ahead and either do some other things. There are some other things you can do. You can preview the quiz the question to see if it is properly uploaded. I can say fill in the correct option to see that it is correct. And then I, I can also just close. All right, so let's move forward so that time we can meet up with time. Like, like I said, you can also, um, you can also, like I said, another thing that is also possible is you can also import again into a second, the second bank. I'll do that quickly without much um, explanation. Um, I'm coming. I can just simply upload again a second into the second question bank. And the second question bank, I have four questions there. Um, and then, so these are the question bank for the second question bank. So if you go there, you see 12 and four. 12 and 4, 12 and 4. So we're done with question bank. If you go back to the quiz page where you have this waiting for you, simply click on edit quiz. We're about to finish the setup now. I took my time. All these things can be done in less than five minutes, actually. But I'm taking my time to go through this so that you won't have much challenge. When you click on edit quiz, the first thing you see is my maximum grade. Is this quiz going to be over 20? Is it going to be over 15? You click, you type whatever is going to be over and save. If you say it's over one, over two, over three, the system will calculate based on that and give you your results over whatever you type here. I will tell the system to shuffle again. I've already done that before, but I want you to still shuffle. Now there are three ways to add questions to your to your to your quiz. Remember, you have set up the environment, you have set up your question bank. What is next? You can either add a new question by creating a question on the fly. You can specifically select question from the bank. If I click on from the bank, that means that there are questions. I'm going to say pick this particular question, pick that particular question. But that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is to say that random questions. When you click on random question, you go straight to the bank where your question is, which is 12 question. And then out of these 12 questions, I want to tell the system to take just 10 of them. 
please take note of what I just did. I went back to my question bank where I have 10, I mean 12 question banks. I say random questions, pick 10 out of this bank and then add random questions. So what it has done is that every time a student comes and picks just 10 questions out of 12 and presents to the student. If you want to add more, you can decide to go back again to another bank. Pick and say, add from these four questions, add just two. Add random questions. So this, question, this student will have 12 questions from two question banks. And this is it. You can see that it says topic two and topic one. It's as simple as that. So your, your exam is ready to go. So like you said, you can see attempt quiz already is there. And the students can start attempting. If I say that um, the quiz password is quiz one, I say start attempt. So I'm trying to test to see that this is you testing now as a lecturer. You're trying to test that everything you've done is just fine. Um, you can test and test. You can test and check. I'm just picking it randomly, so I may not get it. And test. Okay. I'm testing, let me select this one so that I don't feel everything. All right, I'm testing now. Your testing may be very necessary as a lecturer. Uh, I know we'll have questions, so I will start taking questions in the next few minutes. Um, let's select this. So, I just want to be sure that, and this is what your students will do. All right, I tried. I got, at least I got six over six over 12. But well, you can see that, remember, I actually said over 15. So he's saying that the grade is eight over 15. The max is, is telling that I got six questions out of 12 questions. But he simply just said that, um, it has calculated it that I got 50% and the max is um, this. Now, once you have done this and you're ready to go, of course, this is just showing that I've done a test. I've reviewed it. Remember I said that this quiz is not available. But let us make it visible for students. Now, remember we, we had a restriction that unless you have, unless not available, unless the activity course compact is marked completed. So if a student wants to attempt this quiz, you must first of all go and download course compact. That's the way it works. So, but you can always remove that restriction anytime you want, like just simply going back to edit settings. And once you go back to edit settings, you go back to restriction and remove it and save it. Please, can you explain how to drag and drop question on Zoom? I, went, I just did, I just showed us how to do drag and drop, but I may just show us again. Um, but dragging and dropping questions simply means that I was just only importing the questions into the question bank. Um, can, can we use this platform to practice before finally displaying to the student? Why not? You can, as long as you hide it. You can keep trying. You can hide it. You can hide it. Um, but maybe we'll find a way to create um, something that you can, for practicing, but you can always hide it. Um, what else? Um, please, I hope the participants can get, I hope the participants can get the full chat of the step-by-step -step guide to creating. Of course, um, I, I would do that and upload it somewhere where we can see it. Um, going forward, how can we record this presentation in order to play it? I'm, I'm actually recording it and I would make it available. I would record it. Must the question be more teachers? No. As a matter of fact, in, in Moodle, um, in Moodle, let me just show us that. Um, all right, so 
Let's go back. Um, let me show us something on the quiz section. Let me show us something adding questions. If I get back to the question bank, let me get back to the question bank. And I say create a question. These are the types of questions we can create in Moodle. There are several of them. There is um, multi-choice, true or false, um, matching, and several other um, question types. Just look at it briefly. If All right, somebody's raising hand. Um, please, you can unmute and ask your question, sir. Uh, for the benefits of those that uh, hardly, that didn't join at the beginning due to some yeah. connection, one or two, I don't know if you can just do a recap so that um, still not lose out. Okay. Thank you. That's my I'll question. Do that. I'll do that. I'll do that now. All right, so if there are no more questions, I'll just run through this again like we did earlier. Please kindly keep it muted. I think I'm seeing some other questions from the chat section. Let's go there. Hello, sir. Go Please, ahead. how do we set up questions for engineering students? Theory. Theoretical questions. For theory how questions. do we set up theoretical questions for engineering students? For All engineering right. students, the yeah, I, can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. For theory questions, I'm I'm aware. How do we go about that, sir? You can actually set in set short answers questions on this system, but you have to be very very careful when you're setting short. For five hundred level engineer. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. I've heard that. I've I've heard that. I'm trying to respond. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So, now, very very careful how you use this system for um. Theory questions. Theory would not suddenly just mark itself. You're supposed to at least, first of all, if you're using short answers, short answer um, question format, it's very important that you note that you have to provide a margin, margin of errors so that if a student says, for instance, if the answer is student and the student is um, typing student without capital letter, you are supposed to accept it and all that. So uh, maybe it's typing the answer as student and uh, maybe not with the S or something, you are supposed to create those margin of error. But most of the time, what I advise, uh, there is, um, um, you can always use assignment, assignment um, um, activity to collect theory questions. But for grading of, um, of um, for using quiz for theory questions, you must be very, very careful because it is what you ask the system to do that it will do. And moreover, it's, um, I, I, I don't think it would be appropriate to use quiz for theory questions. It's always good to use assignment um, activity so that you can see what they are saying. You can read what they have sent you carefully. Um, so that is that for this thing. But I will elaborate more during this series. I will talk more about that and also teach us how we can use this quiz to answer some of those um, theory questions. Um, that's for the short answers now. You can use short answer. You can do matching for. Um, you can use the matching question format. You can use, um, you can, there's a lot of options actually, but like I said, it's not like multi-choice that gives you your results immediately. You have to be careful in the setup. Thank you very much. So this is the recap now, please. Um, I said the moment you get to your course page, the moment you get to your course page, the first thing to do is to what? Is to turn editing on. Turn editing on. And immediately you turn editing on, you go to the section where you want to create the quiz. And then you add, you add activity or resource. Then you go ahead and click on quiz. When you click on add quiz, it brings you to this page the page where you're supposed to set up your quiz. And we said you add the name of the quiz, you add the password under description. If there's going to be a password, if there's no, you will not be using a password, you can leave it. Then you set the duration of this quiz, the timing. Is it going to end next tomorrow? Whenever it's going to end, this is what it will do. So you're supposed to open up the quiz, the time is starting, and then the day 
the time and date it will end, it will close. So ensure that you always enable, this is very important, enable this. Then the time limit, for every time a student attempts it, how many minutes? Five minutes. Grade. The grade we're using just one attempt, not more than one attempt. If you say unlimited, the student will keep trying. So, and I said that if anytime you select more than one attempt, the system will ask you what grading method. Are we taking the highest, the average of the two, the first attempt or the last attempt? So you're supposed to answer that. Grade to pass, we didn't talk about that because you, if you want to do grade to pass, then you may want to take more than one attempt. That means that the students will keep trying until they achieve the grade to pass. So if you put um, a particular score here, it will, the system will keep looking at that and the student will keep trying. So layout, we said the layout means every, how many questions that, um, appears on each question, on, on each page, which is one question per page. The behavior, we said you should leave it as shuffle within question, which is yes. Um, I intentionally didn't click on this drop down so I don't get yourself confused. But anytime you are on Moodle and you are a bit confused, just simply click on, the, on this icon of this question mark icon. You can read more about it and then it will guide you. Review options, we said we wanted the students to be able to see their scores immediately they finish and continuously forever. But if you, want to if you want to restrict that, then you can say that don't see your scores until everybody has finished. If I, if I remove these two options, that means that until the quiz has ended, nobody will be able to see their scores. But by the time the quiz duration ends, by tomorrow, six o'clock, which is the time we set for this, they will start to see their results. They will come back here and see their results. Um, appearance, I said I don't want, um, decimal places. The other course I showed us just now had decimal places. I don't normally want that, so I normally remove it. I put it as zero. Add extra restriction. This is where you put the quiz password. And overall feedback, you can leave it if you are not going to use that. You, that's telling them you didn't pass, you passed excellent and all that. So um, the course is supposed to be showing to the students immediately we finish. But while you are still setting up, you may want to hide it. So I don't get them confused. Restrict access. I spoke about restrict access, that what restrict access is when you want to do a conditional um, activity to ensure that a student finish a particular um, activity before they can take this quiz. Then um, activity completion is trying to track the progress of the student. And that is where I showed us that report just now. This is what helps you to gather those, that report. Then, um, then, and that's just basically it. And then I clicked and we saved and displayed. Then I also went straight to the question bank and under the question bank, I tried to create categories and then under the categories, we created two, two categories, which is um, topic one and topic two. And immediately we did that, we uploaded questions into these two topics, into these question banks. And then for topic one, we uploaded 12 questions. For topic two, we uploaded four questions. Um, and we went through the import process. And I told us that currently we're just using the Akin format. I showed us how to create that on Notepad. On Notepad. After now, I will also send us a simple format of um, this notepad so that you can also have it. And anytime you're, question, you're setting your question, you can set it in that, in that particular format, it will be fine. Once you're uploading, always ensure that stop on error is set as yes. So that if there's an error, it will stop. At least the visible errors. And then you can, you can do drag and drop like I did. You can drag any file into this section or you choose and just simply upload based on how you understand how to upload it. Somebody is asking a question. Um, who is asking a question? Is Notepad the only only meant for multiple choice? Well, you, there are other formats, but they're the easiest that I will tell you to use for now. There are other types, there are other ways you can use Excel to do that, but Excel is complex. In short, if you don't know how to use it, I don't even advise that you go there. Don't 
through there. Just use the notepad for this multi-choice. Um, so that is it. And once the question is set and uploaded, you have to go to edit quiz. Under the edit quiz, um, that's where we actually brought, we connected the question bank to the question environment. We set up the question environment to check the time, to control the time, to control how the students see the, see the results, to control how, um, whether they're using password or not. Then we went ahead and we set up the question bank where we kept the questions. So what connects the question bank with the question, with the environment is the edit quiz. And so that's what we did in the edit quiz. We said, add, either you add a new question. I told us that if you decide to add a new question, we're going to just select one of these and add it directly. So there's matching shots, answers on numerical essay, uh, calculated and all that. And then there is question from bank. Once you say question from bank, like I said, and you select any, any of the bank, you're supposed to select the questions you wanted to select. So if I select one, two, one, two, three, I'll say select this particular question, but I said, we're not doing that for this. So what we simply did for this particular training was to do add random questions. So if you have um, completed it before and you just got another new question bank, maybe topic three, and you have another, you can just simply come here and add more to this same quiz and that'll be fine. But take note, if your students have started answering questions already, you may not be able to do that. They have started attempting this quiz, you may not be able to do that. So you select the number of quiz you want and that'll be fine. I think I've done a bit of justice to this. Please, um, we may do, we may add more, have more, um, um, next time when we meet, we'll be able to recap on this and then move forward. Thank you all for coming. If there are no other questions, um, this section will end now.